Greetings, my friends. I'm so glad you've joined us for worship on this Trinity Sunday. All that you need to participate fully in our worship you'll find in the order of service. If you're not on our email list, simply go to our website, linked in the description, and there you can click on the resources for worship during COVID-19 and find a copy of the order of service. We begin our worship on the third page of that order of service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. 
and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8. Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Let us pray. Blessed are you, creator of heaven and earth. Amidst the immensity of the universe, you are mindful of us and seek us out. Blessed are you for the gift of your Son, who humbled himself to share our life, that we might be raised with him to glory and splendor. Blessed be your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain, to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the Sunday commonly called Trinity Sunday. This Sunday inaugurates the longest season of the church year, the season after Pentecost, or as it is called in some places, ordinary time. It seems appropriate that this long season, which lasts more than half the year, should be rung in with a contemplation of the divine being. And so it is each year, for it is our duty and our joy at all times, high holidays and ordinary every days, to worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Of course, this Trinity Sunday comes in the midst of a time that is anything but ordinary. So great a swell of outrage at racial injustice has engulfed the United States that even the stresses and strains of global pandemic have moved to the back pages of our newspapers. In Canada, we are reminded of our own grim history of racial injustice, visited upon Black, Indigenous, and other communities of color, even up to our present day. This being Trinity Sunday, a day reserved for contemplation of the grandest, most impenetrable doctrine of the church, it would be easy for the preacher to appeal to the immensity and grandeur of our God in an attempt to make the present troubles seem small by comparison. But in this preacher's opinion, that would be irresponsible, even irreverent. It would do no justice to the palpable anger laid bare in recent days, and it would cowardly skirt addressing the pernicious societal ills that have given rise to that righteous indignation. More than that, it would get us no closer to the meaning and the mystery that God discloses to us in our experience of the divine presence in the world. So I'm going to talk about those things. And I thank you for listening to what I have to say, imperfect though it will surely be. Racism is ruinous to society and grieves the heart of God. We ought to know this in our bones. And yet, in recent days, we have been reminded of racism's continued malign influence. The age of digital communication made it possible for us to see the abominable actions of police officers in the death of George Floyd. The killing of Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia by men with guns in a pickup truck feels like a scene from another time, from a bygone era of Jim Crow and lynch mobs. But this is our time, our world. And so this is no time to mince words. Racism is a sin. Like all sins, it is a rebellion against God's purposes for his creation. Insofar as we have perpetrated individual acts of racism, we must repent of this sin 
and seek reconciliation with those whom we have injured or offended. Insofar as we have participated in unjust systems, which marginalize, stigmatize, and brutalize on the basis of race, we must repent of this sin. And with single-minded purpose, seek the reform of those institutions, lest we betray our God and our fellow human beings. As Anglican Christians, we approach the work of racial justice and reconciliation with formal religious conviction. Our baptismal covenant commits us to this work. When asked, will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord, we reply, I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. The fourth of the five marks of mission of the Global Anglican Communion is this, to seek to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and to pursue peace and reconciliation. Renouncing the sin of racism is part of our religious vocation. Again, in the liturgy of holy baptism, the baptismal candidate or their sponsors are asked, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? They answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. I said that we ought to know that racism is wrong in our bones. I hope we do. I pray that we do. I pray at least that a sense of common humanity has been awakened in these past days. And though violence by police and political agitators is utterly contemptible, the exercise of the legitimate, holy, and God-given right to protest injustice is commendable. Jesus' life and ministry modeled the way of radical nonviolence. And his is the indispensable model for positive change. As modern-day prophets and saints like Howard Thurman and Martin Luther King Jr. showed us. It is this kind of protest which can soften hardened hearts, which can create space for us to be inspired by the same spirit, to breathe the breath of God together. It allows us to see our common humanity. I was moved more than I can say by the image of one peaceful protester, a young woman holding a sign that read, all mothers were summoned when George Floyd cried out for his mama. Hmm. An appeal to what we know in our bones. All of our diversity share a common humanity. I want you to hold on to that feeling that bone deep tug at the ties that bind us all together. When I say we know it in our bones, it's that feeling that I'm talking about. Hold on to it because it is precisely in this feeling that the deepest truths 
of our experience of God are laid bare. We hear the very first chapter of the Holy Bible this morning. The story of creation, of the Trinitarian movement of God to create the world and all that is in it. What do we read there about our common humanity? God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. At the root of every just law, every coherent moral principle that we hold dear, even in this largely secularized age, is this most consequential declaration of holy writ. We are, each and all of us, created in the image of God. In the image of God, we are created. The closest look we'll get at God on this side of eternity is the face of our neighbor. When we marginalize, when we stigmatize, when we brutalize another human being, we have marginalized and stigmatized and brutalized the very image and likeness of our God. This is why we speak without obfuscation in our baptismal rite about the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. God saw that his creation was good. Evil is a privation of the good that God intends for all of his beloved children. Racism is evil because it so corrupts our view of God's likeness in another human being that the destruction of their humanity is the inevitable result. For all the lofty and grand formulations about our God that a Trinity Sunday sermon might bring out of a preacher, perhaps the simple truth is that we know God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit better in our bones than we ever will in our minds. God's image and likeness greet us in the faces of our fellow human beings. God's likeness is always there. God's image is obscured and marred and shattered only by our sinning only by the enmities we build up between ourselves and others, between persons and groups, only by our complicity in systems that allow these enmities to remain entrenched. But God's image and likeness is always there, if only we will see it. In these extraordinary times, this truth about God presents both comfort and challenge. Comfort that we may see our God more clearly, love God more dearly, follow God more nearly by strengthening the bonds of affection between ourselves and our fellows. Challenge that we must, we must show ourselves capable of living into this high calling. You heard me mention Howard Thurman earlier. Thurman was a civil rights leader, a pastor, a theologian, an author, an educator, and by any just measure, a towering figure of 20th century America. I'd like to close with a prayer that he wrote in the midst of the civil rights struggles of the last century. It rings with fresh tenor today. Let us pray.
Lord, open unto me. Open unto me light for my darkness. Open unto me courage for my fear. Open unto me hope for my despair. Open unto me peace for my turmoil. Open unto me joy for my sorrow. Open unto me strength for my weakness. Open unto me wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me forgiveness for my sins. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, my friends, I invite you to join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bound together in Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God with one heart and mind, saying, Holy Trinity, hear us. That the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all into your unending life. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. For the leaders of the church, especially our bishops, priests and clergy who minister in our midst. And for the leaders of the nations, that they may discern ways to overcome divisions and mistrust, racism and marginalization, and may reflect your unity in every aspect of life. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. For our families, our households, our communities, that they may be places of listening, of understanding, of mutual support, which build us up and strengthen us in grace and truth. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. 
thankful for your creation, which you have renewed in the power of the resurrection. We pray that we will be wise and careful stewards. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. In the power of the Spirit who joins our prayer to Christ's enduring intercession. We pray for the sick, the suffering, all who stand in need, all who care for others, all who stand with courage, all who provide for the sustainment of life and who sacrifice for the love of neighbor, for the healing of all the world, we pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. For all who have died, for those we have loved, and especially for those who have died in the midst of violence and racism, Receive them into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace. We pray, Holy Trinity, hear us. This we pray through Christ, who lives and works with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, aware of our need for forgiveness, but mostly of the surpassing love and reconciliation promised in the gospel of Jesus Christ, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with us always. Amen. Now, my friends, I invite you to undertake with me an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us say together, in union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that they may always be united to you. 
And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Let us spend a few moments in silent meditation. And now in the words that our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, friends, will you please join with our organist and choir director, Elizabeth Barlow, as we sing the great Trinitarian hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us today and remain with us always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.